Hey everybody, this is Birch. Uh, what are we up to today? All right, let's see. We got this uh, this email. This is cool. The guy's opening a shop. Say, Birch, hope you're well. I've been looking at opening up a comic book shop here north of the UK. I would love to hear your thoughts on a couple of newbie questions. Well, Heathrow sucks and is an airport. If you can avoid it at all costs, you should. Now, I realize you don't have a lot of options there, but Heathrow is terrible. If they ever put an Arby's in Heathrow, you, you've really created a, a zone of just intense hatred for me. Anyway. Um, that's probably not what you wanted to hear. I am relatively new to your channel, so apologies if this is going over old ground for you. Number one, regarding location, do you think it is better to play it safe and get a low rent premises in a slightly out of the way location on the, if you build it, they will come basis or take a risk on a location with much more passing football, but higher rent. FYI, my city has a population of 80,000 and I would be the only shop for a 20 mile radius. All right. So here'd be my advice for you. And a little bit of this is what is your strength? So I'll ask a question back to you. If your strength is in marketing, meaning you do have the ability to really tap into the local market, you know how to get people to your shop, you've got good SEO skills, you know how to hire them. By the way, if you're setting up a website and you do not have SEO skills, rather than learn it, go to Fiverr, F-I-V-V-R.com. I think that's right, Fiverr. And you can pay 30 bucks and people will do pretty damn good SEO for you for way less money than your time is worth to learn it. And this is important because it's going to help you with search engines. More importantly, though, as a business, it's going to get your location strategy up. When people type in comic book shop into Apple Maps or Google Maps, you're going to, you're going to pop up and appear. It's not that hard to do, but it's really critical. Anyway, but I mean, if your marketing is good and you, you feel like you can reach out to the community, it's better to take the lower rent premises because then, you know, your, your running monthly costs are more under control at the start. However, if you feel like this is more of a weakness that you have, or you don't, you're not quite sure how to reach those customers, then more foot traffic is a good idea. But here's a major caveat. You know, you say you're, uh, you know, you've got a lot of passing football. Are those, are those passing football, uh, fans going to come into a comic shop? So I've noticed a lot of people, they will buy into, you know, pretty expensive locations, you know, that have a lot more foot traffic, but that foot traffic is not going to be interested in comics. In the Seattle area, a lot of people were buying into kind of mini malls and, and you know, locations where they're surrounded by, you know, nail salon, you know, a, a clothing store. Yeah, there's a lot of traffic going in and out. It looks very hustle. It, it's bustling. Um, but it's, it's, it's not the kind of traffic that's going to come to you. What you want to do with a comic shop is looking for something where, you know, ideally there's food nearby. So, you know, burger joint, fish and chips, you know, uh, you, you know good quality Indian food if you're in the UK. Just not a, not a high-end restaurant, but something that is, it gets a lot of, of in and out traffic. You might say, well, f what does food have to do with comic shops? Well, the people who are going to come to a fast food location or something where, you know, maybe quick service, where you may be sitting down like a, Qdoba or Chipotle, you may be sitting in there, um, but it's, it's, it, 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 the clientele is going to match for you a lot better than say a clothing or department store. So just, you know, you got to weigh that a little bit, um, and, and be careful. Another really great location is near a school, particularly a, you know, a kind of middle or high school is generally a good location. You have a lot of people who are needing to be picked up by parents who are not taking the bus. They will migrate to your shop and hang out there. Now you have to kind of deal with that, but you know, you're going to get more traffic. So, I mean, look for, you know, fast food's good. Uh, game stores are good. As long as it's not tabletop games, it's going to compete with you. So video game stores is not bad. Uh, arcades is always good. Um, as I said, schools, movie theater is usually pretty good. These are kind of the locations you want to kind of, kind of look around, but, um, that's, that's, that's going to help you anyway. Uh, by the way. If you have a population of 80,000 and the only shop in a 20 mile radius, that's good math. So, I, you know, if you're looking for a spot, another thing that may be even more valuable than foot traffic is easy to get in and out of. Meaning, are you on a main road or are you at least convenient? Do you, can you people right turn, left turn into your shop or is it a pain in the ass to get into your parking lot? Believe it or not, these little small frictions, these passive things can, can have a major, major impact. So get a location where you know, people can easily get to you. Okay. Um, I, I've seen a lot of stores tanked by that. There's a you know, really good friend who was down in Atlanta, uh, got a comic shop. Wasn't a terrible location, but like you could, you could right turn into it, but you couldn't left turn into it. So you had to go way down the street and then loop around and 
you got into some, you know, just, it was just a pain to get in there. And when you're opening up your shop, regardless of the foot traffic you have, get your online presence up on day one and encourage people to, you know, call in orders. One of the best things you could do is get customers in there who are, you know, get a pull box, get things you, you want to do, and then tell them like, Hey, if you don't want to come to my shop, obviously I want you here and would like you here. But if you get a week where you just want to stay home and, you know, you want to send me an email or go to a web form, whatever it happens to be and order in your comics, don't worry, I'll get them secured. You can pick them up next time you're here, or, you know, we can even get into mailing them for you, but get that mechanism down. So you're basically removing any barrier to somebody giving you that money. So anyway, number two, in one of your videos, you mentioned that if you were opening a new store today, you would not stock new comics for at least six months. What would you focus on instead? Um, so that that was probably a little bit more, uh, you know, it's probably a little bit more extreme than what I meant. What I meant is, so new comics, um, one of the, the the methods in the 80s and, and in particular in the 90s, so the 90s when I had my shop and in the 2000s, um, you, what, one of the typical things you would do is you kind of over order on new comics for the first six months or so, because you're, you're also building up your back issue supply. You're kind of, kind of counting on the fact that a lot of people don't know your shop exists at the beginning. So when they come in, they're going to need to go back a couple months. So it's okay to over order. However, uh, today with the current new comic market, that is a bad strategy. A lot of the comics are seen as more disposable. People are not going back and saying, you know, Hey, I'm coming in for issue three and I, I'll get issue two and one, that's, that's, that's way, way down from where it once was. So I think, you know, the, the, the advice may be on new comics is order carefully, order the main books and don't get hung up with you as a fan. You got to be smart about what's selling. This is where doing a few visits to local comic shops in your area and going, what, what's selling in this market is Avengers selling is X-Men selling. There's a comic shop that opened up, uh, you know, near me that again, I was helping the guy with marketing, but he was obsessed with like the big characters will always sell. So I'm going to order high on flash and green lantern and you know, the, the main characters, everybody knows. Well, the problem is the green lantern and the flash were both having, I would say relatively bad runs. And when I say bad, I liked one of the runs. I didn't like the other, but they were not commercial big sellers. And so, you know, the guy's like, well, everybody knows the flash, but yeah, but the flash comic wasn't selling well at that time. So you, you have to be really careful about understanding what's going in your market and then, you know, indexing higher on those ends, you know, it, it typically a, you know, the, the main ones, the, the Batman, Spider-Man, X-Men is, is a good go and just making sure you have those. And, and the key though, is in that first six months or so, learn your clientele, learn what they want. You know, really agree. I mean, even before you open, if you could start to reach out and say, hey, we're opening up a comic shop. If you want to be on a pull list, you can be an inaugural customer and we're going to give you a free bag and board for your comic. That's a good gimmick. So, you know, months before you order or you open like three or four months before your comic shop ever opens its doors, you hopefully have a few pull box customers already there and they're going to be ordering things. And what you want to do is, is obsessively stare at what they order, put it into Excel and a spreadsheet and, and look at okay, what is this telling me? What is this data showing me? It's showing me that in my area, I've got a bunch of pull box customers that say all like Moon Knight. Okay, well, that's an indicator that as I go into a step into new comics, that's a comic I probably want more copies of on the shelf than say Captain Marvel, which nobody is putting in their pull box, right? You know, whatever. That's, that's just, you know, being really clever about your business. And I think that that will go a long, long way. But there's no reason, you know, uh, and a lot of uh, shop owners make this mistake they start thinking about kind of their shop in terms of day one when the door opens. And the, the best thing to do is try and get, a, you know, a good bulk of customers long before your doors open. Because remember, you're going to be ordering comics three months before, at least, before they hit your, you know, they arrive in your shop in a box. So if you are getting, you know, kind of pull box customers there, it means you hit the ground running on day one and you know a lot of what people are doing. Um, but I would, I'd be focusing a lot on customer service. I'd be focusing on really getting in touch with what your audience is into. Um, you know, go get some back issues from, from flea markets and other stuff. So you have some collection there. Figure out ways to showcase them. You know, this is where you really, you don't know exactly what your audience is going to want. So you really need to, you know, to put a lot of options out there on the table and see what's going to catch. But you want to do that in as cost effective a way as possible. You know, one of the other tricks that, uh, that I used very successfully at, at different times was, you know, go to flea markets and, you know, drop a thousand dollars and just buy a ton of comics, you know, get it, you can go there and you can get a deal 
where, you know, maybe somebody sold it for like 50 cents a comic, but you're like, hey, I'm just going to give you a thousand bucks. So, you know, it's going to net out at like 10 cents a comic, but I'm just going to have this huge, huge box of comics. And a lot of those comics are kind of worthless by and large. But what you can do is you put them in the store and then you, okay, now I'm going to divide them up into categories, into genres, into publishers, everything else. And then the early days when people are coming in, I'm basically saying, hey, what do you like? Do you like sci-fi? Hey, here's some, uh, you know, back issues there, but you can get into them cheap. Like I'll give it to you for a quarter. Okay, well, if I got it net for 10 cents, that's a 15 cent profit. Now, obviously that's not, you can't make a lot of money off 15 cents a go, but more importantly than that, you're writing down what people are buying. And so you're seeing these, these people coming in, they're buying things on the cheap. They're happy. You're learning that you've got an audience that's geared more toward fantasy or sci-fi than say superheroes. All of this stuff is great information that when you start to put more money on the table for yourself, you're, you know, you're, you're aiming it at the right place. All right. Third question. Number three, do you agree that a new store needs to be very well stocked to succeed? I'm trying to find out a way to raise finance to not only kit out my shop, but also buy a very large quantity of graphic novels so as to have full shelves. So, um, kind of the, you know, the earlier answers may have helped with this. Just be careful. Um, there, here's the thing. Um, what is more attractive to customers is a, a well, you know, clean curated, um, attractive, welcoming shop, not a shop that's just stuffed with shit. And what a lot of people do is they're like, I need to have full shelves when I open. Well, yeah, you don't want to have empty shelves. So you just, this is where, um, you can do a lot of tricks in your store to put up posters or, you know, I, one of the things that I, I saw somebody do successfully is pretty clever is they went to Ikea and they bought these, uh, I think they're Billy shelves. Anyway, these big shelves, like five by five grid, huge. Um, the, the, the shelf costs like 60 bucks. Like it's, it's dead cheap. They bring it to the store, they bolt it to the wall and they can put small pull boxes inside of each one of these cubbies, or they can just, you know, if they really want to get fancy, they can actually use the cubbies from Ikea, put the comics there. They don't fit perfectly, but they're, they're in there. So you wouldn't want to use these for high volume comics. I mean, it would, it would, you know, all of what I'm saying breaks convention. However, the other thing you can do is you can then print out posters or you can just, uh, you, quite frankly, you can go to a lot of different places and they'll just give you these things for free. Uh, kind of old marketing posters that are kind of hero images of characters. And you, you take a little X-Acto blade, you, you cut them to where they fit kind of one of the, the little cubbies, one of the little holes. So it basically posters over one of the holes. And now you have like this picture of Wolverine there. And you just kind of space this out, have a little bit of a design eye. And what it looks like is you know, each one of those little cubbies is just filled with books, but in reality, less than half of them are because you've got posters in those other areas, but it's promoting the products. And this, this gives the perception and the, the illusion of a very full shop, but you're spending half as much money in order to fill that shop, which again, to the earlier advice, you want to learn more about what your people want before you start putting a lot of dollars on the table. So be careful buying a lot of graphic novels. Otherwise, what you're going to do is you're going to buy a lot of things that aren't going to move and then as new comics come in, you've got to make room for them. So what happens is you're, you know, you've seen tons of comic stores that have fallen into this trap. You see just junky, cluttered, just ridiculously stuffed shelves. Well, what happened is at opening, they overbought to have full shelves. You know, two thirds of it didn't sell. And now they've got new content coming in and they got to make room for that. And so you just get this cluster looking shop that is also an appealing, um, don't forget one of the things that is uh, incredibly, incredibly discouraging to, to customers is if you have too much there, the noise of all the stuff on the shelf gets to be so clogged and so uh, overwhelming that people will actually buy less. There's a lot of books around kind of companies like Disney and their theme parks and uh, other retailers, Nordstrom, who learn this lesson of if I overpack the shelves, People actually, the, the total dollar amount goes down because people just can't find what they're looking for. They feel overwhelmed by all the choices and they just buy less. So be careful falling into that trap. By the way, one other piece of advice I saw that was incredibly clever is uh, one shop was just trying to, um, you know, basically, uh, you know, fill the shelves. Same kind of approach. They had shelves and they, they didn't want to buy everything. Um, but what they did was they, they, they decided to lean into original art. So they didn't have any original art. So what they did was they went on Google and they searched like artists, you know, Alan Davis, and they go to, you know, you know, image search Alan Davis. And then, you know, 
resolution high or size high, and you get these really large images. Then you, you know, print out a bunch of 11 by 17, you know, black and white, sketchy looking images from these famous artists. Again, back to Ikea, buy a 10 pack of frames for like five bucks. Put these little, you know, these pieces, these, these printouts inside the frames. Now you can't, nobody in the right mind is going to buy this. So you can't sell it. But then you put these frames all around your shop and it just looks like you got original loved comic art there. And you did this for pennies. It was dead cheap. And it just, it looks cool. It sets you apart. Marvel and DC will send you posters that are like four color blaring, just crap everywhere. And they also age badly because they're going to send you posters for like, hey, you really want to get in on this, you know, whatever it is, the Empire event. It's going to be huge. Well, you know, four or five months after Empire is over, those posters look old and, and crappy. So, you know, print out some of these original pieces of art, get some really cheap frames. If you don't have an Ikea near you, you know, go to Amazon and you can get the same thing. But put them around your shop and it just, it makes your shop look super classy. And, you know, you, you it costs you nothing. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's not cheating. That's not stealing. You're, you're literally just promoting stuff. I've had, you know, a, I said a shop did this and some of the artists who did that art came in and saw it. It was like, they were just honored and impressed. Like, wow, my art's up there. That's cool. That's, uh, it, it will help you a lot and you can do it on the cheap. But anyway, that's a little bit of advice for you. I hope that helps. Good luck with your shop. Love that uh, you're open it. To let me know. Send me a photo when it's open. Right back anytime. Happy to help. Thanks for listening.